location. Another another location where they're taking acid. Is there any more locations than this one? It might have been so many people out here. One minute. I want I want everybody to go home. And I want we don't got no home. Okay. That's why we here. Miss Martini took. Yeah. Miss Waters, keep home. We gonna go too. Just a moment. Just a moment. Nothing is going to happen today. Nothing is going to happen anymore today. Oh my goodness. Yes, that is U.S. Congressman Maxine Waters telling a bunch of homeless people to go home. I'm... Uh, I, the, yeah, yeah. If, if there ever was a more perfect representation of what's going on financially right now, this would be it. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Lukadowski here of WeAreChange.org. And of course, we have some crazy news to get into as there are reports coming in of some very unconventional warfare in Ukraine. The United States is sending more aid and military equipment to that country, just enough to continue the conflict, as of course there are some crucial details about what's going on here that we will be talking about in this particular broadcast, as well as some uh, very interesting updates surrounding Miss Ghislaine Maxwell. We're going to be talking about that plus a lot more. But but truly, the, the introduction that I, that I played in the beginning of this video video is, is typical to the reaction by many people in Congress that are enriching themselves through, of course, insider trading, shady deals, corruption, nepotism, outright theft, all the while the U.S. government is trying to create new laws and edicts that will track any purchase over $600 that you make. All of this as Nancy Pelosi's relatives, along with the relatives of the Biden administration, are getting really juicy, amazing job offers inside of Ukraine. Now, if only we had an open platform where we could discuss these ideas without the fear of censorship, where we could have a national town hall, a real conversation about what's going on, how to fix it, how to make it better, how to make our government more transparent, more accountable, more limited in their abilities to intervene and destroy our lives, but we can't. Why? Well, because a few Silicon Valley tech CEOs with huge conflicts of interest and connections to the government prevent this larger conversation from happening, as admitted by even the former CEO of Twitter, Jack Dorsey, that recently went on Twitter unironically and expressed regret at damaging the internet, saying specifically centralizing discovery and identity into corporations really damaged the internet. I realize I'm partly to blame and regret it, end quote. A big admission from Jack Dorsey that looks like he's finally realizing the larger consequences. And even though it's a little too late and we definitely criticized Jack Dorsey on this independent media broadcast, we do have to admit it takes a big man to admit that they were wrong and that this is definitely a step towards the right direction, especially with the conflict for centralization and decentralization still waging, especially in the Bitcoin space, as of course centralization of the internet has created situations where of course a lot of people have been censored for telling the truth and uncovering some of the most disgusting elements of our society that have been aided and abetted by the federal government that for over, as documented through many photos, videos, witnesses, whistleblowers, protected Jeffrey Epstein for over 30 years. This as the latest revelation from this story that has never allowed the thousands of children who were hurt here to see any justice was that the Jeffrey Epstein estate was selling his island, Little St. James, which uh, seems also like a larger financial cover-up operation or money laundering scheme as, of course, the two islands that Jeffrey Epstein's estate owns have been bought for approximately 30.5 million dollars, but yet they're being sold on the market for 125 million dollars, which absolutely makes no sense at all, especially in the private island market, according to many specialists in this field, who are saying that this island is way overpriced, which highlights two possibilities here, as of course, there's a possibility that the Epstein estate does not want to sell the islands. Maybe someone with connections with it still wants to live there. Or two, they're going to raise the price in order to facilitate some kind of money laundering and larger buy-off that, that, of course, will take American taxpayer dollars and put them in the hands of absolute monsters. Which one of those scenarios is true? Who knows? 
as of course we still know very little about what was exactly going on here we found out even less through the Ghislaine Maxwell trial which of course has a lot of very important documents and evidence sealed from the general public as the judge said it would be too salacious too shocking for the general public to understand I definitely disagree with them as of course the details here are already atrocious and sadly we won't be getting a second Ghislaine Maxwell trial as of course the latest developments that we got a few hours ago is that a U.S. judge has refused to do a retrial of the Ghislaine Maxwell case as of course Ghislaine Maxwell has been found guilty for providing services to very rich and powerful customers that haven't been named how can you be found guilty of providing a service to someone when of course the customers aren't even publicly known how does that make sense it doesn't this could be why of course there isn't going to be a retrial here as of course there's a lot of connections to sinister intelligence agencies that are absolutely unaccountable and most likely had an international child trafficking and extortion operation run through of course very powerful individuals like Robert Maxwell, who, by the way, was the father of Ghislaine Maxwell, and according to a new documentary called The House of Maxwell, which is being oddly presented on the BBC, is highlighting interviews with intelligence agents all over the world, including KGB agents and British intelligence that are admitting that Robert Maxwell, a very famous, huge media mogul, sort of like the Rupert Murdoch of the UK, worked for both. Russian and British intelligence. This, of course, shouldn't surprise you, as Maxwell Epstein had extensive intelligent agency connections, and this is why this story stinks to high heaven. There's also a new victim coming forward, releasing some very crazy revelations. We can't even talk about that. We're going to be talking about that tomorrow on LukeUncensored.com. But what happened on uh, this island is absolutely disgusting we can't even mention it here and very interestingly disney cruises also did excursions just a couple feet away from jeffrey epstein's island which is very uh, coincidental as of course the disney corporation is fighting the state of florida very publicly about a recent law that was passed in the state this as disney also looks like it has very serious problems dealing with similar behaviors that jeffrey epstein was connected to and as of course the people involved here are not only invading justice they're also being bought off as we're finding out that Turkish fraudsters are providing close to one million dollars as gifts to Prince Andrew as of course these criminals are rewarded while here in the United States we are soon to have the confirmation of the next Supreme Court justice that literally gave extensively very lenient sentences to people who have committed some of the worst atrocities atrocities on the face of the world, the same type of atrocities that Mr. Epstein was into, to the point where she even had to apologize to the defendants, to the people hurt in these particular cases, for clearly providing a larger disservice during these very key and important court proceedings. So yeah, a lot of nastiness and corruption in, of course, our mainline society that we deserve to at least hear about. But sadly, it's becoming more dangerous to even talk about it on big tech social media. But we're still able to do that, mainly because of, of t-shirts. Yes, sounds ridiculous, but that's the truth here. Because of our t-shirt store, we're able to do and talk about these very important issues. And we just launched two t-shirts that I think you guys will really like on thebestpoliticalshirts.com, where we have dozens of extraordinary designs that are definitely going to spark your creative juices have you laughing have you thinking the that is the point especially when you wear these t-shirts at public events to the general public and you could help spur some conversations make some new friends all by just simply wearing a shirt like the one that i'm wearing right now which is available to you on the best political shirts.com we just launched two within the last few days one is a hard pills to swallow shirt that says it's not the news it's an establishment press release and uh unironically a, a pizza party one which, of course, the commander-in-chief looking more spry and competent than ever. This one's called uh, The Last Pizza Party. And, of course, you can get these shirts exclusively on thebestpoliticalshirts.com. Click the link down in the description below right now to find out more, especially with how you could get involved in helping spread very important messages 
to the general public. To me, this is a win-win for everyone because this is how we get supported. We're not, of course, the corporate media that gets supported by the military-industrial complex, like, of course, MSNBC, that has been literally calling for World War III, unabated, on their national, quote, news broadcast, as they are literally calling for troops on the ground from the United States to come into Ukraine and start the global conflict between East and the West. These kind of ideas are extremely radical. They're extremely dangerous, and they go unabated, unquestioned. And of course, the corporate media broadcasts, with of course, these larger messages literally being cheered on by the alleged hosts of these, quote, news organizations. I'm ready to commit at this moment, unlike I was before this day, to put people in direct contact with Russia, to stop Russia. Call it peacekeeping. Call it what you will. We have to do more than provide weapons. And by we, I mean the United States. Yes, we're going to do it as a coalition with lots of other people. But we are the example. So put boots on the ground. Send weapons directly at Russia. And, uh, you know, some people would say it's a it's a little Orwellian to say it's it's a peacekeeping mission when you're literally starting a war. But that, of course, is the information that the American public is getting through, of course, the corporate media. Very dangerous messages. This, as the United States, has been extensively supporting the people of Ukraine and their military as the Department of Defense just announced an additional $300 million in additional military equipment and aid for Ukraine. Some commentators have pointed out that this is just the right of money to ultimately not make that much of a difference on the battlefield except to indefinitely prolong along the war. That's a comment that I think is worth considering. As we've been telling you here on this independent media broadcast from the very beginning of this, that this is going to be a lot longer of a conflict than a lot of people expected it to be. This Kissinger doctrine of limited war, proxy war, is something that, of course, we have been warning about since 2014. It is here. It is ugly. It is devastating. And essentially, in my book, there are absolutely no winners here. There's a lot of horrors and atrocities of war, including the latest allegation of unconventional warfare being used against the Russians as we're getting reports. According to the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense that two Russian soldiers have been taken out, 28 have been injured and hospitalized after, quote, being poisoned by pastries offered to them by civilians in Izum. There's other reports of 500 Russian soldiers allegedly being hospitalized after drinking poisoned alcohol. Now, are these reports true? Are they meant to stoke fear in the Russian military? Distrust, as we're also hearing that the Russians are allegedly having a hard time resupplying their troops with the proper gear, food, and gas that they need in order to continue these operations inside of Ukraine. As it looks like from the latest reports that the Ukrainians have been able to take back a whole region inside of Kiev, as there's new videos showing Russian armored vehicles in what is described as a tank graveyard. This, as the Russians have announced that they are going to be pulling back and allegedly not fighting as strong during peace talks, whether that's true or not, it's very difficult to find out, as of course there have been a lot of very conflicting news reports that make it very difficult to truly understand what is really happening on the ground there. But I, I think it's fair to say, especially with the overwhelming amount of evidence, photos and videos of Russian military equipment being taken out, that the Russians are dealing with a significant loss of their forces inside of Ukraine. That is pretty much clear. And there's even photos and videos coming out of inside of Russia of Ukrainian attack helicopters going in to Russian territory and blowing up their fuel depots. Yes, this is a very significant escalation. And according to many, turning the tide of this conflict as this battle has already been expanded to two countries right now, and who knows how it will further escalate from here. But the fact that there's strikes made inside of Russia is significant, definitely worth noting, especially when it comes to detailing every aspect of this entire saga that is unfolding right in front of us. This, as according to Peter Hitchens, a lot of this is happening because, the, because quote, the United States wants this conflict to drive Russia 
back to the Stone Age. And I, I do believe that there are some important elements of Peter Hitchens' opinions here that I think are worth considering. And geopolitically, this is a proxy conflict between the United States and Russia, just like the one that we saw play out inside of Syria. And these two empires are in a conflict with each other, which of course largely is bringing in a bigger question of American hegemony on the world stage as, of course, an aggressive American foreign policy has also brought China and Russia together, something, of course, worth considering geopolitically on the world stage. This, as major financial concerns, are becoming more evident and transparent. Also, very interestingly, a Ukrainian intelligence agency is claiming that it was China that was responsible for allegedly launching huge cyber attacks on Ukraine's military and nuclear infrastructure, specifically right before the Russians invaded. This is very interesting because China is a country that, that does have good trade relations with Ukraine. Are they secretly helping Russia, especially in the online digital space? Well, honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if they are, but it's definitely bewildering because largely they have stayed out of this entire conflict. The United States did warn China to stay out of this conflict. China did publicly say that they're going to retain normal trade with Moscow and they rejected the threats of sanctions against them by the United States. As of course, on the world stage, the situation gets more complicated than ever. This as the deputy prime minister of Poland just announced that that country is, quote, open and ready to host U.S. nuclear weapons on, quote, NATO's eastern flank. And as the rhetoric gets more heated here and involves more countries, as the battlefield keeps expanding, I'm left thinking, holy crap, this is an absolutely idiotic situation, especially if you look at the larger financial consequences because of it. This, as it looks like the Russian ruble has relaunched linked to gold and commodities, questioning, of course, the U.S. petrodollar as the world financial markets have been disrupted by this entire conflict. Major supply lines have been destroyed. The price of energy, the price of food is going to be going up, while of course, the devastation of war spreads throughout this entire world as already. 4.2 million estimated Ukrainians have now left that country, 90% of them women and children, with, of course, a vast majority of them going to Poland, their neighboring country that has been supporting and helping them out more than ever. Will there be peace from all of this? Will this conflict finally end? Are the Russians getting more desperate by the day? Is there going to be a larger escalation because of this? Well, who in the freaking world knows? But I think it's fair to say that that all the ingredients here making this situation that much worse are only being added instead of being reduced. The conversation on the corporate media is absolutely disgusting. We should be talking about diplomacy, de-escalation, trade, smart foreign policy moves that, of course, stop a lot of this madness, help protect the innocent, and all of we got is the corporate media cheerleading for the military industrial complex for more war, more conflict, more pain, more suffering. And that's why we strive to do the opposite of that here as independent media. If you thought we did an okay job of that, share this video with your friends and family members. Get a t-shirt to support this media organization, but also more importantly, spread this important message. Knowledge is power, and there's a consorted effort by a lot of powerful people to keep you powerless. Don't let them win. Stay informed. Stay smart. Start critically thinking. Analyze information, evidence for yourself. Make up your own mind, and that, of course, is something that we've been standing behind for over 15 years now. I'm a lot older than you think. I've been in this business for a very long time, and holy cow, we're in a very dangerous situation. That's my perspective. I did another video about this particular topic, which you could watch by clicking here right now and continue the conversation. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you, and this is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.